I, I think I look like Ed Rendell in that photo. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Ellis Cannon. Greg Capozzi joined us actually uh, a few months ago as he was putting together some work. Uh, he is a contemporary Christian performer, composer, producer. has a new CD out. It's called Caught Me at the Border. We enjoyed our conversation uh, then. We uh, asked him when it was all wrapped up to come on back, and here he is. Greg, always a pleasure, man. Thanks Ellis, so much. thanks for having me back. Yeah. Hey, we had a great reaction to your first visit, and uh, I'm so thrilled you're able to uh, fit us in through the uh, holiday here. Um, but you, you're done. You've got, the, done, you've got the CD. Tell us about why this is so important and some other developments over the time since we spoke to you. Well, this CD is a little bit different than the other ones that I've produced in that I just felt God calling me to go on the other side of the fence a little further and kind of meet folks where they were without it being overt, Christian, very liturgical, a little bit more uh, secular, if you will, mm -hmm. and just kind of, you know, lift hearts and plant seeds with where people are. And this album, I believe, will do that. It's, it's more rock-based. It's more uh, would appeal to folks who may not, you know, have... Uh, you know, a strong faith or a strong desire for organized religion or any of that. And I think that, you know, there's a message in every song that's, that's tied right to the spirit, and it could draw them in. It could. Well, it's interesting. You, you, you brought up two interesting points. Number one, that you basically felt the presence to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, certainly having even going back now a few months and having you on looking at the uh, video associated with it, it definitely uh, had a more secular look to it. Now, Absolutely. the words themselves were not necessarily as secular as what the appearance that might have been. Mm -hmm. So I suspect you're saying that the end has remained the same, but the means have changed within which you seek to get that end. Absolutely. Uh, it's always the circumstance that you're going through that kind of drives whatever it is that we're writing at the, at the time. And um, every song has different, a different angle coming from a different point, whether it be from an anxiety point or if it's coming from uh, a temptation or if it's coming from just you know a struggle or some kind of a, a conflict that, that that we all go through time to time okay well individually sure we all ex we experience whatever humans experience in terms of uh, emotions and any other variety of uh, uh, parts of life but I, I want to talk take you there to what you just said you said we all come from a different angle is that generally the case with artists because i couldn't sing a note i'd like to believe that i have an element of me that has some creativity and entertainment value and some other aspects but i can't sing um i leave that to guys like you um so but they're every artist I would imagine sets out to either fulfill an agenda that they have long identified or they want to um, speak to what is happening at that moment. Is that fair? I think so. I mean, and I think you give yourself a little more credit than a lot of people have ear that you can hear, you can appreciate. You might be a music enthusiast. Mm -hmm. Not everybody, you know, can harvest, so to speak. Some of us water, some plant, some fertilize. Um, from that perspective, yeah, I mean, it, unless it's a homework assignment, you know, write me 25 measures in the style of Mozart, blah, 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 blah. You're trying to set up an objective. For me, I just kind of, you know, let the Holy Spirit just lead me to what it wants to say. It's, it's really not my message that I want to be heard. It's not my voice that I want to be heard. It's, it's God's message. And, that's always driven by the circumstance, and to that end, to answer your question, I guess in a roundabout way, yes, I think all artists, whether you be you know, sculpting, painting, you know, in the arts in general, we're, we're driven to want to produce something, to leave a mark, to leave a legacy, to, to, to serve, to do, you know, well and well done, good and faithful servant, that at least from a Christian perspective, for me, that's what my goal is, and, um, and and we're given a talent, some different than others. So for me, it's music, and I just try to get in tune with what the Spirit's looking for, and just go that right and kind of. Sometimes this may sound funny, but I just I 
kind of let the song kind of write itself sometimes. Well, that's very interesting way to put it. We're going to come back and actually have one more segment with Greg. I want to get to how his uh, uh, presentation, if you will, has been received by his audience. He also has a Christmas album out uh, in a DVD form. We're going to let you know about that and how you can get these and uh, make them part of your holiday period. I'm Ellis Cannon. He's Greg Capozzi. You're watching Night Talk. everybody, Ellis Cannon, Greg Capozzi is a contemporary Christian performer. He has a new CD out, uh, Caught Me at the Border. There's going to be a uh, CD release party and Christmas concert. Why not you know, bring them all together at once? And he picked the right day, December 11th, right in the middle of everything. It's going to be over at Club Cafe on the south side. Uh, if you're interested in Greg, interested in his music and uh, uh, the change in some respects, at least in terms of uh, uh, how he has historically presented his uh, uh, word, if you will, um, then please go. Uh, it's obviously going to be a good time. Great. CapoziMusic.com is where you can also learn about uh, his uh, uh, new CDs and where you can get them and, and things of that sort. You'll get directed to where you need to be. Um, when we came out of the last segment, we had uh, a, a little uh, musical interlude mm -hmm. and then a little there with some video. What, what did we see and hear? That was a fifth track on the new album, Caught Me at the Border. It was a song called Wallflower. And... Um, the song, uh, it's about, you know, your inner self, about introversion. Um, I naturally, I'm just an introvert. I think I would do just very well in my own mind. But if you watch a video or something, you wouldn't think that at all. You're no. a performer as well. Right. But when I'm there behind the keyboard or I'm there in that setting, I'm in that that realm where I'm, I feel very comfortable, and it doesn't matter if there's one or a million people out there, I just feel very, very comfortable in that spot. But if I'm just talking socially at a dinner party, I clam up and... I'm, I'm very similar. You know. and it's interesting because I actually have a couple of sons that I've had described, one who I would say would be an extrovert, and they say, oh, no, 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 when he's here, he's different than he may be over here, and, and just the opposite with the other one. So maybe i got to get used to what that all means. But I, I think I understand your point. When you're, when you're on and you're comfortable, that's one thing. When you're away from it, you're in a different place altogether. Absolutely. And the other thing, too, is like, you know, for the longest time, I've been kind of led to believe that, you know, I need it fixed. Like, being an introvert is a bad thing. And, it, and the song is like, no, no, there's a legitimate legitimacy to being, you know, leaning towards introverts. I mean, you can you could go way lean right or left mm -hmm. on either of them and be mm -hmm. too socially up mm -hmm. where you get bored if you're not the life of the party or doing this or that. But I think it's a good balance, and, and the tune kind of speaks about some truths and some things about that, and it gives it a legitimacy, and I think it would appeal to folks who maybe feel like they're a little socially introverted. And I know it, it helped me tremendously to write that song to, you know, when I learned it, and, and just because it gave me a peace of mind to know that it's okay. It's okay to be... Sure. And, and again, that touches. Yourself. Last time we were here, we talked about a lot of this uh, 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 music. Uh, regardless, frankly, of your uh, religious affiliation or lack thereof, or, or how you consider that, that, that there's a human connection to a lot of the, what you're writing about, uh, and, and particularly in the emotional sense, as you talked about earlier, anxiety, other uh, things that may be happening in your life that a lot of people could touch it, uh, into with this music. Now, you presented it uh, a bulk of uh, your career, if I have it correctly if I recall correctly, with more liturgical type of approach. So how has this been received? <clears throat> People love it. I, I've gotten the most positive feedback from this from a lot of my friends because it's a new direction. Every album doesn't end up being the same as the last. and it, it, There's a constant development. I kind of like that. I don't want to just be, you know, like a Mozart where you're writing the same thing all, you know. Well, you would take being a Mozart right, if you have I would tell you, I'd tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Beethoven, who I love, that's my favorite composer, he just got better and he got better and he got better. Now, I 
got to stop and say, I am in no way, shape, or form trying to compare myself to no, 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 but, no, but you want to progress. I mean, we all want to get better. I we want to get better. Okay, but it's interesting because this takes me totally out of left field. We had a gentleman on who uh, is with the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra, and he basically is bringing the fusion concept to Pittsburgh, where he is uh, melding, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, Coldplay uh, with Beethoven or Brahms. Oh, I mean, and, and, I, and, I, and I asked him, and the guy was, he has to be 32 years old at the most, 35. I mean, at the most. Mm -hmm. And he said Beethoven was the guy. Everybody who's ever done anything composing-wise, they have Beethoven in their head. Absolutely. I can't believe you, you're saying the same thing. I mean, yeah. track two, if you listen to the about two-thirds of the way through the tune, it's nothing but piano. It's like, like wait, wait a minute, what happened to the song? It's a classical piano interlude. It's only eight measures long, and then boom, right back into the into the rock again. Track three, same thing. At the end, it gets very eclectic, like from the Eastman School of Music days, where, where you, you just there. do this really crazy thing because it's voices in my head. You know, all these voices are whispering, mm -hmm. and I just you, you feel like that. You know, the music should match what it is that you're trying to emulate. So yeah, I'm trying to tie in a lot of these classical elements, just like you just said. Yeah, that's interesting. I love that. I love yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, you check it out. I mean, when he was oh, yeah. on, it, it blew me away. I've got 60 seconds, and I got to scream. Um, your website is greatcomposingmusic.com. The uh, release once again is going to be December 11th over at Club Cafe on the South Side. It's a CD release. Uh, there are two of them. Caught me at the border is one. Uh, and uh, I'm always reminded to push this a little forward just so it doesn't shine too much in your face. And then we do have the Christmas album that Greg has put out as well. Uh, is this a little bit more traditional? I see a lot of songs here I remember, like Joy to the World, O Come, All Ye Faithful. All uh, sacred, all very straight, but when you listen to it, you wouldn't know it. It's uh, done with drums, guitar. It's just done with a little bit of a twist. We put a lot of the typical 4-4 four, four hymns into a swing 6-8 kind of feel, so it, it, it gives it a little contemporary. Well, you've been, you just taught it. me more than I ever knew about music, <laughs> but I'll, my sons will love it. So, Absolutely. my wife, thank you so much. Thanks again for having okay, me on, it up, brother. All right. Appreciate okay. it. Thank Good you. job. Good luck, of course, on the 11th. We're going to come back and do a wrap of tonight's show, which, of course, been as eclectic, but it did deliver on the promise. We'll be back in two minutes. Earthlings, that's a wrap on another session of Night Talk. Thank you once again for being part of tonight's program. Ditto to our illuminating guests. Remember, you can find a replay of this production tonight at 2 a.m. tomorrow. Also tomorrow at 5 p. So you can DVR it. Also connect with Pittsburgh's first and only live primetime television show. Of course, that's us. And you can do that online at WPXI.com. Just click About Us on the top right. Find Night Talk and, and you're going to find all type of cool toys on the Monday through Thursday shows and get to the point with Lenny on Fridays. Also, uh, previews of upcoming guests and so forth. Uh, email us is very simple. Uh, nighttalk at WPXI.com. You can also tweet Night Talk uh, from there. There's a spot. You can just do it right at the uh, website uh, and uh, it'll go up to at PCNC Night Talk. So, that's it. I'm Ellis Cannon. Have a safe evening, everybody, and God bless. <laughs> Thank you.